Our top players like Aditya exploring the metagame in advance of the World Championships and trying to find some of those techs that may just be hiding under the radar. And we're going to see the first one here, which is Smeargle out on the field next to Varigarath. Now, this Smeargle has the access to Fake Out, Follow Me, Decorate, and Spore. And it is not the Moody version, it is own tempo. So this Smeargle will not be having any changes to its stats. It will just be able to use any one of those support moves. I love the pairing of that Smeargle with the Farigarath, though, as that means that these priority attacks from the Grimmsnarl, mainly that Thunder Wave, have no opportunity to connect with these two Pokemon. I think that Aurelion is certainly off on a much more offensive start, especially given that the Urshifu Rapid Strike is on the field. And this Urshifu Rapid Strike, we didn't even talk about mm -hmm. this, actually has safety goggles. So it's no surprise that Aditya gets that Smeargle off the field almost immediately, as there's really not much it can accomplish here. Yeah, it cannot put that Urshifu to sleep with Spore, and also is immediately threatened by either the Surging Strikes or a Taunt from that Urshifu. Instead of going for the Taunt to get rid of that Smeargle, just going for the offense. A Surging Strikes on the Calyrex Ice Rider on the switch in will oh! deal about half the damage, and Grimmsnarl's gonna finish it off right there with a foul play, and that is Turn one, and we have seen Farigarath, we have seen Smeargle, and we no longer see Calyrex, so whatever the Force Pokemon Aditya has is going to have to do so much, and uh, it has to be Ursaluna, it or this is over. It has to be. It has to be that Ursaluna, and that play from Aurelion was so smart. Surging Strikes hits multiple times. You can pick up the KO on that Smeargle in one turn through the Focus Sash, and if that Pokemon was on the field and got KO'd, your foul play will then be retargeted into the Farigarath Will it will do some nice, super effective damage. But because Aditya switched in the Calyrex Ice Rider, the combination of those two attacks was enough to pick up the KO on his most powerful attacking Pokemon. And with the return of the Smeargle on the field as well, Aditya has so much ground he needs to make up. Even though the dimensions and the speed is in his favor, this Urshifu and Grimstar will still threaten so much more board pressure. Genuinely, the only damage Smeargle can do is be a fake out, and which means that Aurelian, they are totally free to go for a light screen, which will even through the uh, decorate will reduce the amount of a special damage that comes out from this Farigraph. Now, the Psychic Noise, because of that Decorate boost, able to pick up the one-hit KO onto Urshifu. So, you know what? Maybe I was entirely wrong. Maybe there is big damage still left for Aditya, uh, so long as you can find super effective targets for that Pokemon. And that's going to be a bit of the struggle as we get a sneak peek to Aurelian's back to Pokemon in this matchup. But I got to say, Farigaroth has a surprising amount of special attack. And I think that's something that people constantly underestimate, especially when you're running it with Trick Room and Helping Hand. Yeah. On Team Preview, when you look at that list, it reads more as a supportive Pokemon. But Aditya showing another way that this team can run. If you go for another Decorate here, you're going to have a plus four Farigaroth. Psychic Noise is going to do a lot of damage. And you also have the potential on this Farigaroth to Terrastalize and then go for a Terra Blast. Probably don't want to do it in front of the Terrapagos at this point in time, but with Aurelian's last Pokemon being weak to ground type damage, that could be an option if he finds his way through this Terra Stellar Choice Specs Terrapagos wearing the glasses probably on, on the middle turtle, right? <laughs> probably. Well, Grimmsnarl goes for the Thunder Wave and Into paralyzes his, own Pokemon. his uh, That is a paralysis to drop the speed of the Terrapagos. Oh means gosh. that Terrapagos is now the fastest thing in Trick Room. This is a Choice Specs Terra Star Storm connecting with both the Ferrigarath and the Smeargle. Drops the Smeargle down to the Focus Ash and brings Ferrigarath to 50%. If Aurelian is able to get off more of these Terra Star Storms, they will be able to break through this Farigarath. Plus, paralysis means you can no longer be put to sleep. And the other part of Decorate is it not only boosts your special attack, it also boosts your attack, meaning that Farigarath is even more vulnerable to foul plays. 
Exactly. It's such a risky play to paralyze your own Pokemon as a Trick Room counter because now Aurelian has to deal with the off chance that he is the cause for his own Pokemon not to move. But when you're staring down a Spore, which is a 100% chance of inactivity mm -hmm. for up to four turns, I think you take this risk. Every it, time. With the speed advantage as well. You are giving yourself Oof. an out and it's paying off with another Terra Star Storm for a Double KO! Yeah, that's the Farigaraph down, that's the Smeargle down, and Aurelian is making quick work of this game one, catching the Calyrex on the switch in, and then allowing Aditya to get that Trick Room up for himself, but then Aurelian saying, uh, never mind, uh, I can actually make my Terrapagos the fastest thing in Trick Room, and it is now just going to be that Blood Moon Ursa Luna in the back, facing down a light screen, and again, this Terrapagos, and we already know that there's the Iron Hands in the back as well. Yeah, so even though this Ursa Luna Blood Moon probably wants to go for Terrastalization this turn to get a additional normal type attack boost onto Blood Moon or onto Hyper Voice, that is such a risk to take because if you're not 100% yeah, you sure knock it out. of your speed on the field at this point in time and you go maybe after this paralyzed Terrapagos attacks, you're gonna be in big trouble. And I like the protect here from Aditya, just recognizing how much is at risk for him in this board position. Yeah, that's just going to be a wasted turn here of Trick Room because of the Protect. So Aditya set the, the Trick Room himself, but staring down this now paralyzed, a Terrapagos will have to end Trick Room. So now Grimmsnarl likely able to deal some damage and this Ursaluna likely able to be the fastest thing left on the field. Here's a Terrastalization from the Ursaluna. That is a normal type terrestrialization to boost either Blood Moon or Hyper Voice. And again, normally I would say Hyper Voice looks pretty good right here, but that light screen is still up thanks to the light play from Grimmsnarl. Foul play just dealing a little bit of chip damage, and there it is. Aditya has to go for the Blood Moon to connect on that Terrapagos, oh! which actually still holds on at one hit point. Life Orb, Terra Normal, Blood Moon, not enough to pick up that KO. And that's just gonna be a Choice Specs boosted, super effective Terra Stellar, Terra Star Storm, single target attack onto the Ursa Luna. Picks up that KO. He has to find his way through this matchup, and we yeah. do get a mix up here. It's actually Annihilate on the field. I like this mix up here. You know what does not get reduced by Reflect or Light Screen? Final Gambit. No, so Annihilate out on the field means that there can be guaranteed damage. You know, Annihilate will deal as much damage as it has hit points with that attack, or it can threaten close combat damage into this Terrapagos. Uh, Shadow Claw unlikely to be making much of an impact in this game, at least from this point, but you do have the option to go for that final Gambit, especially next to a Trick Room setter, so you can bring in your Trick Room Pokemon in the back to start sweeping. It was a combination that was very popular in the earlier regulations for Scarlet and Violet, as Annihilate plus like an Indeedee, for example, meant that there, you were really essentially guaranteed to get Trick Room up in the way that you wanted to. With this Calyrex Ice Rider, though, I'm not sure. There's going to be a lot of damage on the field, and now Annihilate probably won't move before this Terrapagos, too. Okay, well, that is the Thunder Wave connecting onto Annihilate, so Terrapagos does get to go first here again. Terrastalizing into that uh, that form there to launch off the Terra Star Storm, bringing Annihilate down to a little bit under half of its health. We'll connect with Grimmsnarl, so we can see exactly how much hit, how many hit points that Annihilate was left with. 98, thank you very much. And now here is the Calyrex able to set Trick Room. So we're in a fairly similar situation to where we were in Game One, with a huge difference that Calyrex has not gone down and no screens have been set yet. So if Grimmsnarl goes down, one of Light Screen or Reflect will not be able to go up for the rest of the game. Which one, though, is the question? Because it will have the opportunity to set one screen up if it wasn't for the fact that Smeargle now is on the field and will threaten Fake Out. Mm -hmm. 
fake out plus a glacial lance should be able to pick up the KO on Grimmsnarl from this range, but you are going to be taking another Terra Starstorm for your trouble, and that is going to put that Calyrex Ice Rider dangerously low. It's possible that even though it's on the field now, Ooh. you're going to have to take a big risk to get through it. And I guess one way you can mitigate Ooh. the amount of damage lost by Reflect is by decorating your own Calyrex Ice Rider, but will it be enough? Yeah, that's no fake out. Reflect goes up, but the Decorate boosting the attack of that Calyrex Ice Rider connects onto the Grimmsnarl, picks up the KO, does just up over 50% to that Terrapagos as well, which means that after this chilling nave boost, this, this Ice Rider Calyrex will be able to pick up the KO on Terrapagos next turn. Here comes the Terra Star Storm, though. We know that it brings that Smeargle down to the Focus Sash, but again, without a critical hit, not enough to pick up the KO on that Calyrex. So, it's going to be the Urshifu or the Iron Hands in the back to finish out these last few turns of Trick Room, and that is now an extremely scary Calyrex. You have got to make sure you get that Pokemon off the field. I think having the Urshifu on the field, though, even though you would think that having the Fake Out pressure from that Iron Hands might be more important, it's a, it's a uh, safety goggles or Shifu, which means it cannot be put to sleep by Spore on that Smeargle. So Aurelian correctly identifying that the threat now from the Smeargle, yes, it could go for another Decorate, and I think realistically would have to if it wants to try to knock out that Urshifu in one hit. But now he's forcing Aditya to follow that game plan, and this will allow him to get the Terrapagos off the field and send in the Iron Hand to threaten a fake out now in a later turn of trip room. Yeah, well, the Smeargle's not able to spore the Urshifu, but can draw its attention with that follow me. So now this Glacial Lance will connect onto the Iron Hands and the Urshifu, dealing enough for a two-hit KO onto both of those Pokemon, as the Surging Strikes will finally pick up that Smeargle with only a single hit to take that final hit point. So now Iron Hands out on the field. This way you preserve Fake Out and have the ability to hit through a potential Protect from the Calyrex. Now, Aditya does now have the other offensive per, uh, part of his team on the field, the Ursa Luna. So you have to pick one of these Pokemon to focus down. I think you have to focus down on the Calyrex as it's threatening a lot more damage than that Ursaluna. And honestly, Aditya probably has to lock in the terrestrialization on that Ursaluna, at which point, if you can find your way through the next couple of turns, Terrapagos comes back out onto the field and is able to deal that super effective damage once again. We get the confirmation of the terrestrialization from a detail, but the big question here, I think, is what did the Calyrex Ice Rider do? And will it be enough damage to keep Aditya in the lead? All right, the Terra Normal Ursaluna Blood Moon on the field gets baked out by the Iron Hands. Aurelian is stopping the bear from moving, and no priority from the other Pokemon means this Glacial Lance is just going to pick up the KO onto both of these Pokemon. That, uh, the, the Urshifu does not have Aqua Jet because nope. has opted for the Taunt instead. So both of those Pokemon are going down, which means the Terrapagos comes out now. Does have spread coverage with the Terra Star Storm, and I, I, I believe there it's, it's still, still trick one room. more turn of trick It room. is. Unfortunately, there just is not enough time on the field for this Terrapagos to find a KO because had it been paralyzed, had it had the speed advantage, Terra Star Storm would have done more than enough damage to pick up the double KO. But instead, it's actually the Urshif times going into Annihilate matchups. You try and see, okay, at full health, these are the Pokemon on my team that can take that attack. Going into this game three, though, it looks like there will not be a return of the Annihilate. Instead, it's going to be that Smeargle once again out in the lead for Aditya. All right, Smeargle, but now this time, as opposed to game one, partnered with the Calyrex instead of the Farigarath, which uh, was not able to do much of anything in that first game. So this fake out pressure now is a little bit more valuable to get the uh, Calyrex into Trick Room and able to deal some damage. But Aurelian yeah. does have the option to deal some big damage back with either of the Terrapagos or even the foul play on that Grimmsnarl. It's a tough decision for both these trainers to make because at the end of the day, Aditya can very safely click follow me and trick room here. And 
if your opponent goes for that Terrastalization on Terrapagos so that it has spread damage, you know that's not going to be enough to pick up the one-hit knockout onto the Calyrex. Mm -hmm. So if that's the strategy that Aditya wants, you go for an early KO onto the Smeargle, and then you're able to get a Pokemon uh, pivoted in, and then you have the Calyrex Ice Rider plus probably that Ursaluna again. Instead, we do see the adaptation of the Fake Out. Yeah, which going will, for the fake out there. Yeah, which will mean Trick Room is set up on the field. Trick Room is set up for basically free here. Yeah. Terrapagos even loses the Terra Shell ability. It, it does, but now you're leaving yourself open to the strategy we saw in game number one, where the Grimstarl can go for the Paralysis onto its own partner. But Smeargle still does have Follow Me, so you are going to be sacrificing the ability to boost up your own damage, but I think if you think that your opponent is going to go for that strategy that won them game one here, you have to click Follow Me this turn. Yeah, there is not going to be a Decorate coming out from that Smeargle. It's a Follow Me, and Aditya does get the Thunder Wave out of Aurelian's Grim Snarl. So this Smeargle has now been paralyzed, and crucially, the Terrapagos has not. This Glacial Lance, though, will deal good damage because the Reflect has not gone up onto both of those Pokemon. And here comes the Terra Star Storm. This will be enough to pick up the KO onto the Smeargle. So Aditya has delayed the Paralysis by one turn at least and crucially wasted a turn where Aurelian would have potentially got a Reflect up that turn if they had predicted the Follow Me to come out. Now, though, you do have the opportunity to send in your next Pokemon. I was thinking it was going to be that Ursaluna, you know, force your opponent to pick either Reflect or Light Screen at this junction in the battle. But the Ferrigoroff is an interesting adaptation as well. Helping Hand plus Glacial Lance yeah. may do enough damage through Reflect to pick up the KO on the Grimmsnarl and certainly put that Terrapagos in range of a KO. You could also potentially go for like a Psychic Noise or just do some damage on your own mm -hmm. to try and even up the score. But overall, I think Ferrigoroth is in a supporting role here to boost that Calyrex Ice Rider. The question is, is it going to be enough? Yeah, there's no more Decorate, but there is a helping hand for the Calyrex, which means that this Glacial Lance will be able to deal some damage through the Reflect. Won't be able to pick up the KO on Terrapagos, but does get the KO onto Grimmsnarl, which means that there are now Chilling Nay boosts on this Calyrex. So Calyrex gets the Chilling Nay boost, and a Terra Star Storm comes out from Terrapagos. That's going to deal good damage to both of these Pokemon, but should not be enough to KO the Calyrex without a critical hit, and it is not. And having the Farigarap in here actually is doing a really good job of making sure that this Iron Hands in the back can't buy a turn for Aurelion with Fake Out. Can't buy a turn with Fake Out and will also be taking some really good damage from Psychic Noise, mm -hmm. its Psychic Attack of choice. So now you're in a situation where while the Calyrex Ice Rider will most likely be knocked out this turn, it could probably take down the opposing Terrapagos with it. Aurelian's only option to avoid that would be to switch in the Urshifu, but with more Trick Room turns remaining, you might just be setting up for a KO in just the next turn. Yeah, Aurelian is going to need to find a way to stall out these remaining turns of Trick Room, and they don't have a lot of options. Terrapagos is the only real chance for, for damage for Aurelian in the end game, so has to protect that Pokemon. Farigraph's Psychic Noise deals a little bit of damage to Iron Hands, crucially will prevent Iron Hands from healing back with Drain Punch, and a Glacial Lance will connect onto both of these Pokemon. Not enough to pick up the KO on Iron Hands. It just does a little bit to the Urshifu. That Wild Charge is enough to pick up the KO on the Calyrex, though, so it gets that Pokemon off the field and takes a little bit of recoil damage, which I believe will put it into range of another Psychic Noise. It's going to be close for sure, as we don't know what kind of damage roll that first Psychic Noise was, but the Iron Hands can... Well, the last turn. It's the last turn of Trick Room. The Iron Hands cannot protect, so most likely it will be going down this turn. But I think that's exactly what Aurelian wants. Mm -hmm. Once Trick Room has expired, we know the Terrapagos will be faster. 
And if we see Aditya go for that terrestrialization on the Ursaluna, like we've seen him do in games one and in games two, that is going to be able to secure a KO onto both of his final Pokemon. Aditya has to find an opportunity to turn the tides here without terrestrializing the Ursaluna. Mm -hmm. This is the opportunity for Aditya. Aditya needs to use this final turn of Trick Room in a big way, like you mentioned, without using that terrestrialization, which will then make that Ursaluna weak to the Terra Star Storm. Aditya is going to just go ahead and protect in front of the Urshifu, which is going to go for a detect as well, correctly identifying that Aurelian is just going to try to stall out this final turn of Trick Room. The Psychic Noise covering just in case the Urshifu went on the offensive, but Iron Hands goes for a wild charge, doesn't pick up the KO on for Rigorab, actually sticking around here, and Iron Hands also sticking around. So Aurelian does not get a free switch into the Terrapagos here. He doesn't, but that's okay, because now the speed is in your favor, and the only opportunity you could have to lose this game would be if Aditya gets Trick Room up a second time. And with such little health left on that Farigarap, either this Iron Hands or this Urshifu can secure the KO. I think if you want to play it super safe, you have your Urshifu target down the KO into that slot, just on the off chance that the Ursaluna maybe tries to get a little bit sneaky and uh, find an opening there somehow, maybe a helping hand boost to an attack or something. Uh, but in the end, as long as Trick Room doesn't go up, you do have the advantage on your side of the field, but we see the helping hand. So this Ursaluna is going to try and find its way back in. It's trying real hard. The Surging Strikes actually goes into the Farigarap. There is no terrestrialization, and Farigarap's helping hand will boost the power of a Hyper Voice coming out from this Ursaluna, but it's slower than the Iron Hands, which means that this Terrapagos will be able to clean up the game here. Here comes the Hyper Voice. Aditya is trying desperately to bring this back. We'll pick up a double KO, but this Terrapagos sitting at only a few hit points will have the advantage up against this Blood Moon Ursaluna. Unlike other Ursaluna Blood Moon we've seen throughout the tournament so far, this one does have Earth Power over Vacuum Wave, which means Terrapagos is guaranteed to attack first. And with Ursaluna at less than half of its health, taking a turn here just to see what move this Pokemon locks into. Terra Starstorm is going to be more than enough Ooh. damage to lock in the KO. Okay, I think this was the one move that Aurelian could have locked into that has like a kind of chance oh, okay. of losing. And he's going for it. He's going for Aditya's it. Aditya's out is to make Terrapagos run out of power points on Terra Starstorm. Now, it is highly unlikely that that will happen, but it is possible until now, the Protect has <laughs> failed. Uh, any one of those other attacks would have been enough to pick up the KO as well and have plenty more options uh, to not be stalled out. But there it is, the third Protect fails. Aurelian Sola advances as a 6-0 and o player heading into our seventh round of Swiss. I saw them both have a little chuckle about <laughs> it.